Hello again, everybody. It is June 24th. Welcome into the Keep Boone Healthy Facebook channel. Hi, I'm David Jackson with the Boone Area Chamber of Commerce, joined by App Healthcare's Director of Public Health, Jen Green. A lot of new information coming out today. Governor Roy Cooper, Secretary Mandy Cohen speaking about North Carolina staying in phase two for the next three weeks and, uh, and what the ramifications of all of that uh, are. Uh, that is what we intend to get into some of today and tomorrow as well right here on this uh, outlet. So first of all, Jen, thanks for uh, coming back again. I think, again, you are now the new clubhouse leader in appearances on this, uh, on this platform. <laughs> so congratulations. I'm not sure if it'll stay that way, but, but you're at least the leader in the clubhouse for now. Thank you for inviting me back. Awesome. Glad to well, be here. So uh, today's news coming out that, that North Carolina was indeed going to stay in phase two, um, as, as Governor Cooper mentioned in his press conference, uh, the, the science of data continues to drive his decisions. Uh, now that you've uh, heard this information and, and been able to digest some of that data uh, from your perspective, uh, what were the things in there that were the most important in terms of uh, determinants to stay in this situation right now? Well, we know that um, we have increased testing in the last month. But along with that, we have seen uh, the percentage of positive cases um, continue to rise. And um, that is concerning. We've certainly heard that not only from Secretary Cohen, but also um, from um, our um, public health uh, leadership. Um, we have a state epidemiologist that we have a lot of faith in, and that's one of the key points that we have been watching over the last few weeks. Um, in addition, we know that hospitalizations um, have increased and um, so with that, in addition to uh, the trajectory of um, new cases, uh, all things are pointing uh, the wrong direction. And I think that Governor Cooper uh, was wise, and I'm very appreciative as a public health professional to see that he is using data to drive decisions. We'll get back to the, the more statewide aspect of this in just a moment, but I think it's also a great opportunity to update the snapshot on how things play locally here in, in the high country. Certainly, App Healthcare has three counties that you're caring for. Uh, so how, how are these trends being seen here on a local level? So we are continuing to monitor trends. Uh, we have seen since um, phase two began, uh, really a pretty steady trickle of cases on a regular basis, which we expected as we, you know, have talked about before. Uh, but, you know, as we see more people traveling about this summer, uh, we're continuing to see more cases. So I think, um, you know, we stand today at um, Watauga County at 47 cases. Um, we're continuing to uh, keep our dashboard up to date. Um, but uh, a lot of them are, you know, I traveled to this place and um, and I'm back now, uh, kind of scenarios where uh, people have been um, out of the area uh, or potentially traveled. And we certainly understand that. Um, I know people are, are ready to do those things, um, but it also increases our risk and um, we are seeing more cases. Uh, in addition, we're testing people during their quarantine period if they've been exposed. So we know some of the positive cases locally that we've seen are really uh, driven through that action to try to make sure if someone has been exposed and we know that um, we've asked them to stay in quarantine and we're trying to test them before they leave quarantine just in case you know they could be an asymptomatic case. Uh, we certainly don't want that to continue to spread. Um, so those folks are being asked to, to, to be tested during that, that period and that's leading us uh, to find more cases, uh, which is also you know a positive. We wanna know the, that before people are out and about. There has been a lot of discussion on the internet about these topics. I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not. <laughs> but yeah. with that said, um, some questions have come up that, that I think it's a great opportunity to highlight. And we're going to do that in a more fun way here in just a minute. But one of the, the, the most common questions is about the difference between cases and active cases. Uh, yes. Can you provide a little bit of a definition as to when the health department decides that, that a case is no longer active? So... Um, Typically, when someone is diagnosed, um, uh, they get a positive result. We use the day that their test result came in as the beginning of the clock for the active uh, case count. We count forward 10 days. Um, that is following CDC current guidelines. Um, you are asked to isolate for 10 days after you get a positive result. Um, now, if you have symptoms, you're also asked to make sure that you don't have any fever for three days and that you are um, you know, having improvement in your symptoms before you leave isolation. But uh, given all of that, we use the 10-day mark to, to monitor active cases. 
Um, so you'll continue to see um, the numbers uh, change over time because as we add new cases, uh, some others may still be in their 10 day window, um, but others can you know, drop off uh, over time too. Uh, the total case count is really a cumulative count of all uh, cases from the beginning when we started counting our first case in March. So um, that, that's an important uh, point. It's meant to try to help everybody understand, though our total case count continues to be large, uh, we want to, uh, or larger over time, uh, we want to give you a snapshot of where we stand right now in this moment in time, how many uh, people actively have uh, COVID-19 in our community. And within that, I've, I've seen a couple of people ask the question, uh, and this is just kind of the, the way that data gets gets put out there. There has been that split, like you talked about, between those, those cases, and we've seen, um, you know, that that number be referenced for the most part in a in, in the proper context to help give, um, you know, folks an idea of what things are like today. When do you foresee that same level of detail coming to the hospitalization number or maybe even the uh, types of cases that you're monitoring outside of the area? Or are those data points not um, full enough to be able to split things out in the same way that you might the active cases versus, uh, versus cumulative cases? So we are continuing to get more data. Um, one of the things we hope to put up um, on our dashboard is um, more of a demographic breakdown of cases. Um, what commonly may not be uh, known is that um, in North Carolina, there's a requirement that positive cases be reported to the local public health agency. But um, that doesn't mean that we always know about negative tests. So a negative result or the number of tests that have been done um, that has been a data point that we haven't been able to really firmly say we have a good number. Um, so one of the points that we hope to be putting out more frequently is the percent positive. Um, so the no total number of tests that have been done and the total percent positive um, that we are continuing to see. Because if that continues to drive upwards, we want to be able to do um, even more testing to make sure that we don't have any virus hanging out um, that we may not be aware of. Right now, all of our counties, um, we just got last night a report to show kind of where we stand um, with our district. Um, and we are well below the 10% positive um, that the state has got. But I will say, you know, that's gonna be something that we're gonna have to continue to uh, measure and monitor. Uh, hospitalizations is something that is um, on our website right now. Um, it's a cumulative case count and um, it is by district. And part of the reason for that is because we want to be sensitive to the fact that um, unlike some bigger counties that have lots of hospitals, um, you know, we, we have uh, usually one hospital in each of our counties and we want to be uh, really careful that we protect privacy of anyone who may be uh, faced with the hospitalization. So uh, at, at this point in time, and, and you kind of alluded to one of the answers in this, but we're going to play this game here. Okay. okay? So we're, we're challenging ourselves to find new ways to get information out here. So um, within all of what you just said, I think this, this sets this up well, to look at a few commonly asked questions. That's the name of our game. Commonly okay. asked questions as found on the internet. So buckle up. We have no way of knowing where this is going, okay? Um, <laughs> one, of those, the, one of those commonly asked questions or, or things that has been posed out there has been, I heard that somebody at Business X tested positive for COVID-19. What is the health re uh, department's response to that, that scenario? If you found out somebody was positive that, that worked at a particular business, what steps do you take and when, um, or do you take any, depending on the situation? Uh, so I will say we, uh, we get notified when someone has a positive result. Um, if a business owner notifies us or if they are a positive case and they have residents in our area. So we get notified in multiple ways, um, but our first step is to do a case investigation. It's really important to know that we take um, our role of notifying the public very seriously. Part of what we want to make sure we do is not um, unintentionally target um, messaging that would be harmful to a business. Uh, you know, people can uh, have COVID-19 and be picking it up from a lot of different places. We know that community transmission is certainly occurring. Um, and so 
we want to be sensitive to that. Um, so you may not see us put something out about X business having a, this employee. Um, and that's because we don't want there to be any unintended consequence um, that could, you know, cause harm to a business because of that. Um, so, yeah. And, and I guess to further that, if let's say that X business did have an employee that, that had tested positive and there were people that through your, your investigation were found to have been exposed for the proper period of time to that person, they would be contacted separately, right? They would be. And we, uh, we would work uh, closely between the person who's a positive case and sometimes the employer itself uh, to make sure that uh, we've isolated and quarantined um, people uh, effectively and that they know that they have a role in helping us uh, make sure that people are complying with that. Um, you know, we don't want anyone uh, not being truthful um, and sometimes that can happen. So um, we do try to work carefully both with the positive case to identify contacts and contact them directly. Um, you know, now we have multiple ways of getting in contact with folks. Uh, once we find out their information, we can uh, do that through a phone call initially, uh, but they can also get um, a text message and, uh, or an email if they'd like, um, if that's easier for them uh, moving forward. And kind of a sub question to the game. It's our game, so we can make up the rules. Um, if in, uh, uh, we'll, we'll ask it in the form of uh, to maintain an integrity of the game, of course. Uh, it's the, uh, I heard that employer X had somebody have a fever when they checked in for work and they just sent them home. So the question would be, what is app healthcare's guidance for an employer that does have somebody show up at the workplace that, that is exhibiting COVID symptoms? Uh, so it's important to take action if someone has got symptoms and I will say a fever is certainly concerning because could be COVID-19, could be other things that could be spreading in the workplace. So sending them home is certainly the right thing to do. Also, uh, keep in mind that people can have milder symptoms with COVID-19. So um, it's sad to say it, but sometimes, you know, having a headache that won't go away, uh, nasal congestion, a runny nose, or just feeling kind of crummy. Um, those kinds of things, we want people to be uh, tested. And so encouraging someone to be tested, linking them to testing locations. Uh, certainly, we have uh, multiple places in Watauga County where you can get tested. and uh, That would be uh, a good thing for an employer to do. Um, and you can call us if you have questions. Um, we uh, have people ready to take your call and answer your questions. All right. The, uh, the final question here for our game, we'll, we'll move on to a new topic, but it does involve testing. And, and the question reads something like, I went to get a COVID test at the local drugstore that is now offering COVID tests. And I know there were at least 10 other people getting them. But when I saw the number of cases updated for the day, it was less than 10. So can you again go over how uh, or what kinds of locations are you getting that um, that test data from where you're able to see those uh, negative tests uh, come back and, and what kind of businesses or what's the circumstance around people not necessarily reporting both the positives and negatives right now? So um, typically uh, there is an electronic notification system with labs. Um, so when someone gets a test uh, there's a laboratory report that goes from that lab where the sample was taken at that provider um, to a state system um, that we use to run a report that would tell us um, the number of uh, positive cases. Uh, just as of last night, uh, we were able to see a report to show us the total number of tests conducted that we believe are electronically reported. Um, typically that's been reported at a state level and we haven't been able to pull that data um, at a county level. Um, but the main thing to take away is um, the lab result gets reported. So I'll tell you, you know, if you're looking for a day to take off of work and um, it's not a good way to get out of work because we can verify if, you're, if your employer, you know, calls us and uh, we certainly want to make sure we're protecting health information, but um, sad to say, we've had a few people try to uh, pull one over um, and, uh, and, and fake a result. So um, know that there is a process um, to confirm a, a positive case. So we, uh, we try our best to make sure that um, uh, we confirm a positive case before we take for further action. And that's really the way we do it. It's this electronic reporting system that allows us uh, very tight access um, uh, to our staff to be able to 
uh, to know who's uh, got a positive result. It usually takes a couple of days um, uh, for things to show up. So you might go get your test today and we may not know about it um, until a little bit later, um, you know, uh, in the week. Uh, and that brings up a, a good side question there too. I know that Boone Drug has mentioned some things that they're going to be doing differently with different kinds of tests. Have you seen that change much, the diversity in the, the types of tests that are available here in, in Watauga County and the high country? And, and do you expect that to get better with time? Yeah, I think that's a really good opportunity, and I'm glad that they're um, you know, jumping in to um, help with that. Um, the rapid test, uh, or uh, just like you would have a flu test, is what we're seeing um, really talked about more. It's an antigen test, and uh, the main thing to know about it is it's got a lot of um, uh, ability to help us um, have a quick answer if you are positive. It does have some uh, more room for a false negative, though, so um, if you do have a rapid test, um, we are certainly recommending that there is a follow-up um, molecular test that takes a couple of days to confirm that you are actually negative um, and, uh, or, and or positive. Um, we certainly uh, would treat a positive result in a rapid test as a, a presumptive positive, um, but um, that's uh, something that has, uh, we've got one test on the market, I believe, that's got the emergency use authorization from the FDA. Um, and that we're seeing uh, more providers looking into that, uh, and I think including us, uh, to try to have another tool in our toolbox um, to really be able to identify that quickly. So I think that's we're going to see more of that. Still not a whole lot on antibody tests yet. Well, we know that a lot of people have questions about that. Uh, we'll see that continue to be something that is um, evaluated as the literature, you know, gives us more information about how to best use that. Uh, you know, right now, if you get an antibody test and you uh, test positive that you've been exposed to COVID-19, it really doesn't tell us a whole lot. We don't know that that's a ticket to immunity, and that's really the key. And uh, there's uh, plenty of information. Uh, we, we have linked App Healthcare's COVID-19 page on our uh, boonchamber.com. Uh, slash recovery and relaunch page. That is the old local response page. Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see uh, that link under the Keep Boone Healthy section. All of the public health guidance listed there and, uh, and links to, uh, to App Healthcare's uh, list of uh, places that you can get tests of, available there uh, as well for those of you that are interested in that information. Final question for you. By the way, you won the game. Uh, you get a Keep Boone Healthy team. Oh, yay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and other, other prizes uh, as we can you know, afford them. Um, so uh, the, the last question is, is something certainly that's on a lot of folks' mind. It's kind of like the what next in, a, in our timeline of things. So we know now that phase two will last for three more weeks. We did hear Governor Cooper mention a big decision coming up soon uh, on the, the public schools return to school guidance uh, and, and, you know, a benchmark needing to, uh, to be addressed there soon to make sure that those wheels are in motion for, for school to start on time, uh, no matter how they do that. Uh, there's certainly a lot of people wondering about Appalachian State, Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute as well as to what their plans are. Um, if you were to um, say that, that uh, App Healthcare has a role in this, what, what kind of role are you playing at this point in time to, to help, I guess, make sure that, that the, the data is there, but also then to work with those folks to, to make the informed decisions that need to be made? How are you all in, involved in that? Well, um, that's a great question. Uh, and I think it's important that the public know we have heard from all of those, um, you know, uh, institutions. They have uh, folks working hard to try to make sure that they are doing their best to prepare. Um, we know that public schools uh, will be uh, getting a little bit more guidance soon about which plan we're going to be moving to. But our role um, with all of them is to really assist, um, provide guidance and uh, support. Uh, we know that, um, again, if we are notified of a positive case, we've got to work through case investigation. And um, just like we did back in March before school was uh, online learning, uh, we worked cl closely with both uh, all the organizations that you mentioned, uh, trying to make sure that we had identified anyone who had been exposed. So we would do the same thing um, moving forward. I think the key is going to be a combination of practicing the three W's, uh, screening protocols that need to be put in place, um, as well as uh, just trying to make sure that everyone is on the same page about um, how we uh, notify people and, um, and keep people safe. Uh, certainly, we know communication is a big part of um, how we manage our response, and that'll be important for us to continue to, 
uh, work together on. But we we have confidence. Um, I think it's important that folks are looking at COVID-19, but, you know, imagine mumps or pertussis or a lot of other uh, illnesses that we have faced uh, in the past. Uh, vaccine preventable diseases, unfortunately, have been on the rise the last few years. And so we have a, a standing partnership with our schools, um, both uh, higher education and, and below, to, to try to make sure that we partner together and address these needs. I lied. One one last question for you, and, and part of your response made me uh, think about this again. Um, you know, uh, earlier in in conversation, and I can't remember if it was a month ago or a year ago. It all seems like the same. <laughs> but, but there was a yeah. little bit more talk at that time about regionality and about uh, decisions being able to be made in regional quadrants of the state based on uh, the the response to numbers and and the, and the data and the science. Have you heard much about that anymore? Because it, it seems as though as people are moving around more, that, that the feel of regionality feels harder to control. Or is that something that the state is still kind of looking into as a possible option, maybe not necessarily for schools or phases, but for other aspects of their COVID response? Yeah, I think, um, you know, perhaps the most uh, critical piece of regionality might be uh, the public health data that we're using to track uh, where we have concern. Uh, you know, the state is certainly looking carefully at communities that have a higher infection rate. Um, so that along with uh, where we have healthcare facilities, and we know that um, that is a big part of uh, preparing uh, for response is making sure that we look regionally at our um, uh, hospital beds and infrastructure there, as well as, you know, where's our trajectory of cases? Are we seeing a higher positivity percentage of tests? Are we seeing more people uh, go to the emergency room? So I think that that is continuing to be something to inform us. Um, but in terms of decision making, I think you're right. There's certainly some challenge in trying to broadly make those decisions. Um, I'm grateful that we've had some more decisions made at a state level because I think that helps us be um, sort of on the same playing field um, locally. Well, and we'll be uh, talking with Town of, Boone, uh, Town of Boone officials tomorrow about mask enforcement, face covering enforcement, just how that works with the ordinance that's in place, the, the state's guidance that will go into effect over the weekend, and, and just kind of where all that sits. So we'll get into that aspect of the conversation. Jen, your information always so incredibly valuable. Thank you for uh, everything that you and your staff continue to do to keep this community safe and healthy. And uh, certainly I look forward to, to working with you all even more uh, with the Show Your Love campaign launched now, and, and we've got plenty coming down the road with that as well so uh we'll we'll give you the rest of the day off uh and we'll probably talk <laughs> thank you tomorrow if that's okay <laughs> great well um thanks david we appreciate the chamber and all that you're doing and um yeah uh, last plug uh, show your love um wear your uh mask when you go out um practice your three w's you know wash your hands and keep your distance from others mm -hmm.